my lovelies, welcome to my channel. Here we are doing another reading for you guys. I just finished spell work. It is exactly 4.20 in the a.m. And I was feeling a bit restless. I did some meditation. And I was being very drawn to pulling out some cards for you guys to see who's looking at you. Um, we're going to dive deep into it. See why they're looking into your situation. Why they're asking about you. Why are they constantly having you on their mind? As you guys can see here, you're going to be able to choose set number one, the amethyst. Set number two, the dice. And set number three, the skull. I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes to tune into the energy, see what you're being pulled towards. I'm going to do it freehand so you guys can see. There is no nothing here that is prepared. Uh, like I said, we're going to do... a psychic reading so we're going to be looking into it and seeing exactly what we're being shown so i'll give you uh, give you guys a couple of minutes so that you can tune into the energies and we'll go from there All right, my lovelies, let's get into it. So like I said, set number one, the amethyst. Set number two, the dice. Set number three, the skull. We're going to start with set number one. So we're going to put the skull to the side as well as the dice. So we're going to get right into it. How are you guys doing, by the way? Hope you guys are doing amazing. All right, let's see what's going on. Let's see who's looking at you. Who's tuning into your energies? Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, please step forward. Allow us to see clearly and concisely. Who's looking into those that chose set number one, the amethyst? Who's looking at them? Who's looking into their situation? Why they're looking into the situation? Give us clarity and insight, understanding, wisdom, and guidance. Okay, one more shuffle. All right, let's get into it. So the general energy here is the sun card. Sun card could represent a past relationship. It could also indicate someone that is um, missing you in a very positive way. This could be a person that could feel like there was a missed opportunity with you. The desire to want to reconnect. Okay, so that's the first energy. Let me put this this way so you guys can see. If you guys can see, I hope you can. All right, the second energy here is the Nine of Swords. So the Nine of Swords is an indication of constant thinking and regret. There is almost like a feeling of a missed opportunity. I feel like this person could feel in their energy like they did you wrong. Um... It's almost like wanting to come out of that or wanting to reconnect with you. But the stress, the anxiety, the, the fear more than anything, and I think it has more to do with pride. That's the reason why they're not reaching out. That's the reason why they're not contacting you or making movement towards you. All right. The next card that we have here is the ruler of coins. So it could be earth energy, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. This can also indicate a person that is extremely stubborn. So you could have had some type of past connection or past relationship or perhaps still dealing with them. Uh, there may be cut of communication. There may be lack of communication, I should say. And this person is stuck in their own ways. It's almost like when you tell them what it is that you're expecting from them or what you're wanting, it's almost like they feel that you're trying to push them to doing something they don't want to do, even if they do want to do it. By the simple fact of you bringing that up, it's almost like there is a resistance there and this person is extremely, extremely guarded. Now, the next card here is the Ten of Swords. So yeah, it could have been a past relationship, a relationship if you recently went through some type of breakup or some type of separation, this person is definitely still in your energy. 
They're definitely looking into what you're doing. Could be through social media, could be asking friends about you. Um, and it's almost in a very sneaky way, uh, asking about you, how you're doing, but don't tell her, but don't tell him that I'm asking about them. Um, the Ten of Swords also indicates, you know, like I said, some type of ending where th the ending could have been very painful. It could have been very difficult. They acknowledge that now. They understand that. They they see their wrongdoing. They understand that they could have gone about it a very different way. Um, definitely hearing that there is a lot of pent-up aggression. So this could be a person that in the past was either extremely hurt, they were betrayed, and any type of energy where they feel like they have to step up, it's almost like a defensive mechanism of retreating, of pulling back, or of pushing you and keeping you, keeping you at arm's length. And the reason for that is because there is fear of getting hurt. So again, if there was a separation and ending here, um, and this person has constantly been either crossing your mind or you've been dreaming about them, know and understand that it's not coincidental. It's that you are still in their energy. They are still in your energy. They are missing you. They're thinking of you. They're wanting to come back from this ending because I feel almost like the Ten of Swords is in essence in the reverse position like they're they're refusing to accept that the ending or that there has been an ending. Um, now, what they're also saying here is, I feel that there was a moment in time that they had to pull back or that you had to create some type of distance in order for them to miss you, in order for them to appreciate you or in order for them to see truly um, your worth. And I know that it's, you know, kind of like what people say, um, you don't know what you have until it's gone. Um, they knew what they had. They just thought you would be there unconditionally. And it seems like that wasn't the case. The next card here is the Hermit card. So the Hermit card is exactly the internalization of the cause and effect, the having to realize this is what their life is now um, based on the actions that they took. There is, again, regret and a feeling of heaviness, a feeling of, you know, I want to reach out to them. I want to make things better, but they don't know how. And I feel like they lack emotional maturity. Now let's see what the next course of action is for this person. What is the next course of action? What is the next course of action that they will be taking? What is the next course of action? And we have here the Conqueror of Swords. So there is definitely communication that is going to be coming. There is them um reaching out or making the move uh finding the courage i feel like right now they are in this suspense mode of being suspended they don't really know exactly what they should do but there's going to be a moment of realization where they're not no longer going to be able to hold themselves back so there is quick communication that will come in i feel that it's not the type of communication you want I feel that they're going to be very direct and they're going to be very to the point, maybe even come off a bit cold. Um, and that's their defensive mechanism kicking in. That's them making it seem like they're doing you a favor by reaching out. When in reality, we see that they are missing you. We see that they are not moving on um, and they're wanting to contact. So it's almost like I'm going to be mean uh, to get their attention, but also to be able to read where they're at right now mentally because they don't really know what's going on with you. Um, and again, like I said, it is very to the point, very cold. 
Uh, so they may come off as almost like casually, but in reality, it could happen um, in the in the spur of the moment. Um, and I'm also hearing for some of you guys, it could be a drunk text. Uh, it could be while they're out with friends. Um, and they make it seem like they're having a blast. But in reality, if they're having a blast, why would they reach out to you? Do you see what I'm saying? So it's almost like they're trying to create this facade or they're trying to make you think something that isn't um, only because they're pride and ego. Now, the next card here is the justice card. So again, justice is exactly the balancing of scales. It is karma. It is dealing with the consequences of our actions. Um, and I feel like they are currently deliberating, deliberating, trying to figure out, should I reach out, should I not? But again, there's going to be a moment of weakness in them. And I feel that it could be very spur of the moment because they become overwhelmed with their emotions. Um, for some of you guys, this could be, like I said, a drunk text, a drunk call, um, or uh, making up an excuse of I'm drunk, let me call them. And then they sound very like, like they're very drunk. But I feel like there's, it's almost like they're creating this facade for you to think, oh, they're just calling me because they're drunk. When in reality, they've been thinking about you for quite a while. Um, so I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, let's go on to the next reading. All right, my lovelies, for those of you guys that chose set number two, the dice, let's get into it. Spirit gets who's looking into those that chose set number two. Give us the reasoning behind it. Why are they looking into them? Who is looking into them? Give us clarity and insight. Allow us to see clearly and concisely. Who's looking into them? Those that chose set number two. What is the reasoning behind it? Who is looking towards them? And why? Give us clarity and insight. All right, one more shuffle. All right, my lovelies, here we go. First energy here is the death card. So you may be dealing with a Scorpio. It could be a Scorpio that's looking into you. For others of you, it could be a situation of an ending. So there could have been some type of ending, some type of conclusion. Uh, this person is not ready. They're just not ready to let go as of now. Um, doesn't, have to, doesn't have to be romantically. We'll see. Uh, but for some of you guys, it could be a connection with a friend, with someone that you recently had a falling out with. Okay. Your next card here is the Three of Coins. So the three of coins does indicate the desire, the want to come together, want to uh, mend fences, wanting to get on the same page or the same wavelength as you. Um, for some of you guys, this could even indicate um, someone that was or that is related to you. It could be a brother, it could be a sister, an aunt, a cousin, someone that is blood related, where perhaps you had some type of falling out. I feel that they could be defensive um, and it's giving me almost like the victim mentality, the victim, the drama, the, the, the person that doesn't fully take self-responsibility for their actions. Um, so it could have been a person that was toxic in your life that you decided to push or pull away from. All right. So let's get into the reading. Now the first card here is the Seeker of Coins. This is, it's almost, it's almost like there was some type of connection, some type of, I feel that for a lot of you guys that chose set number two, you're dealing with someone that is either blood related or that you would consider at some point in your life like they were family. So this could be a friend that you really trusted. This could be a person that you genuinely trusted at some point. 
Um, and there was a falling out and could have been a falling out because uh, the three of coins here indicates a person that was trying to one up you. So it could have been a situation where you started to see certain shady shit about them. Like they were being shady. They were being not righteous, definitely. Um, and you decided to either pull away your energy or completely block them and no longer deal with them. And it's like they're refusing this ending or they're refusing to accept or take self-responsibility. I'm hearing for a lot of you guys, they're refusing to apologize. Um, and it's almost like it's giving me very, very immature tendencies. Uh, this is a person that, again, plays the victim or has a tendency of creating drama where they're at or the people they surround themselves with. And they wash their hands clean by claiming that they were the ones to be deceived or they were the ones that were taken advantage of when in reality it's that they'd like to start drama unfortunately now the next card here is whoops it is the eight of swords so yeah they're definitely feeling stuck they're feeling like they can't um they can move on or they're not ready to move on i feel i feel like there's definitely jealousy here I'm not sure if it's something that you've always known about this person, but it's almost like because they're showing me someone that is very familiar to me and it feels like I want to trust them, but I also feel resistance. So it's almost like you've known all along that this person was shady or it could have been that other people would tell you things that they would say behind your back, but you have a tendency of trusting or seeing the good in people. And I feel like you've given this person multiple opportunities or multiple chances to prove, you know, the naysayers wrong. Um, but it got to the point where you felt like you had no other choice but to create distance because they were becoming very toxic or they were becoming a lot to deal with. Um, and the Eight of Swords is exactly the energy of what this the culmination where we were before we made the decision to completely pull them off or pull away from them. And, you know, it's it's that of feeling stuck. It's that of being frustrated, perhaps holding back, perhaps not wanting to be nasty or going to that point of being nasty. So instead you retracted or you chose to walk away from that. Now, the next card here is the ruler of cups. So this could be a water energy, could be Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. We do see Scorpio here as well. For others of you, it could be a person that is extremely emotional. And when I say extremely emotional and extremely immature, it is a person that is uh, or that has tendencies of being manipulative, narcissistic, selfish. Um, it is all that has to do with, you know, the, the king of cups. In the reverse position so it's a person that is very manipulative they they change certain things to fit their story or their narrative and I feel like this is a person that at some point you felt like like I can't just shut them out because they're family or I can't just shut them out because we've been through so much it's like you kept making excuses for their behavior until it started to directly affect your peace of mind um, and again, it's it, the, the ruler of cups is coming out to me, energetically wise, as in the reverse position. So this is a person that creates their own drama and then sits there and points the finger at other people um, instead of taking self-responsibility for their actions. And I can tell you off the bat from this energy, it's like I know spirit is telling me you were in the right they were in the wrong but they are portraying themselves as the victim or they're making themselves out to be the victim like you're the one that's jealous you're the one um that is hating on them you're the one that uh, creates drama or makes up drama when in reality it's them 
And it's almost like no matter how hard they try, they have a tendency of this. They, they have a habit of doing this. So even the people that they go to to express or to talk bad about you or to say bad things about you, it's like they know better because they know the type of person they are. Now the next card here is the ruler of swords. So yeah, it's it's taking the high road. It's the energy here is you know the 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 king of cups is overly emotional when in reverse. It's like I'm going to one up you just because I want to prove my worthiness to others. I have this major need to prove to others that I'm better than you or that I'm better than anyone else. And it's when things don't go my way, I'm going to play the victim and I'm going to sit here and judge you for everything that that I feel people need to see my side of the story and that's my narrative. And the ruler of swords is exactly the opposite of the king of cups in reverse. It's the king of swords. The king of swords is not about bullshit. The king of swords is about being direct, being honest, being bold, speaking up for your truth and being completely honest, even if it means cutting relationships, cutting friendships. It's like, I'm going to speak my truth and I'm not going to be okay or I'm not going to deal with bullshit and I'm not going to allow you to manipulate me. And I feel that this is the energy um, that you took on the moment you decided to cut or break links with this person. Now let's see what... Let's see what their next course of action is. Spirit guides, ancestors, please give me clarity. Allow me to see what is their next course of action regarding this situation. What is their next course of action? What is their course of action based on this situation? What is their course of action? All right. And we have the Ten of Cups. And the Ten of Coins. Wow. So they definitely, they definitely see that having you in their life was a blessing. It could have been that in the past you did a lot for this person. It could have been that at some point, you know, with the Three of Coins, it almost gives me the impression of when this person was down, uh, down and about. It's like you were there to lift their spirits up or you were there to give them voice of reason. You were there. You were a complete blessing to them. And they understand this. And now they see the worthiness of that friendship or that connection that they had with you. And that's why they're looking into you. That's why they're wanting to see what's going on in your life. Because they see you as who you are. And it's almost like, I'm getting like like jealousy and being being jealous about the light that you radiate the, sh the 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 shining light that comes from you and it's not something that you force it is something that is naturally gifted to you and I feel that they see that they they see that their life doesn't have much substance without you it's almost like you were their voice of reason and as demented as this sounds, their spitefulness and their drama is almost like that's their way of getting attention, if that makes sense. It's almost like they see you as a person that gets a lot of attention or that you have a lot of people that are genuinely, authentically around you because they enjoy your company because they know your worth. And that's something that they aim to strive for, except in a very distorted way, they go about it in a very different way. They go about it by creating drama. Uh, they go about it by encouraging people to have self-pity on them. And it's like they want to attain or they want to achieve what you have um, and the blessings that you possess or that you have or that are being bestowed upon you. It's like no matter how much you know, trash talk they've done about you. In reality, they want you to know what they're saying 
because they want to have some type of reaction in order for you to be the one to address them because they don't have the balls to do it themselves. And in reality, what they're wanting is a reconnection. Uh, let's move away from this and let's work on our connection again. Let's work on our friendship. Let's work on our, you know, love that we had for each other. And it's not to say that this person didn't love you or doesn't love you, um, because I do see that in a very distorted way. They do. Um, and, and again, we, we, you know, with the 10 of coins and the 10 of cups, they're definitely not over this situation and they're going to want to reconnect with you because they see you as a blessing. They see you as a person that, you know, everywhere you go or, or the people that you deal with or the people that you come across, it's like, you bring substance to their lives and it's 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 giving me very distorted vibes um it's almost like the narcissist right the narcissist that likes to play games and the moment they make it seem like they don't have any feelings but the moment they feel like they're losing control of a situation or like you're over it and you don't care what they do anymore it's like i'm gonna throw a fit and a tantrum to try to get your attention. And I feel like that's the route they're taking. But in reality, it's because they don't have the balls to tell you that they care for you and that they don't know how to show genuine love because perhaps they were taught very distorted love and they were taught to manipulate and to play the victim. And this is something that they learned at a very young age. So again, I do see them wanting to connect, wanting to come towards you. And the reason for it is because they want to stand in your light. They want to stand in your energy field. They want to feel good like you made them feel good when you were around them. All right? All right, my lovelies. Let's get into the next reading. All right, my lovelies, let's get into it. Let's see who's looking into you. Those of you guys that show set number three. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, please give us clarity and insight, understanding, wisdom, and knowledge. Allow us to see who's looking into those that show set number three. Why they're looking into them. Who's looking into them and why they're looking into them. Who's watching them? Who's looking at them? Who's wanting to get information about those that chose set number three and the reasoning behind it? Spirit gets. Okay, one more shuffle. All right, let's get into it. Now, your first card here is the Ace of Wands. Uh, so it is definitely someone that is interested in you. Uh, this could be a person that perhaps you're aware of, perhaps you were dealing with at some point. For some of you guys, this could be a secret admirer. All right, let's get into it. Your next card here is the Seven of Coins. So I feel that for a lot of you guys, this could be a person from your past. There could have been some type of connection, perhaps some type of communication in the past. Um, you definitely know this person, um, but I feel like Something could have started but didn't fully manifest. For others of you, this cause this cause this could just symbolize a person that always had the desire to want to connect with you on an emotional level. They just never had the guts to either present themselves to you or to tell you flat out that they're interested in you. However, I do see them contemplating and I do see them being extremely tempted to reaching out to you or wanting to make contact or professing their interest in you. All righty. Interesting here. Very interesting. All right. Your next card here is the devil card. Maybe a Capricorn that you're dealing with. For others of you, it could be an Aquarius. Um, this could definitely speak about a person that you definitely know who it, who this is. I feel that for some of you guys, those of you guys that chose set number three, I'm going to be very straightforward. 
if you are dealing with a person where you were only like in a fuck buddy situation or only being physical with each other and it's almost like they portrayed themselves like I'm not looking for anything serious or I don't want anything serious um I feel like they're in their feelings or will be in their feelings and they will be um communicating uh their genuine interest in you and I feel that this is coming like as a surprise to you because I'm hearing I'm not looking for anything serious so that to me is like the fuck buddy type of energy um but it could have been something that they were like off the bat straightforward about um but I feel like the more you spend time with them or the more you guys connected the deeper they got invested in this connection now the next card is the high sage these are powerful energies here that we're dealing with for those of you guys that chose set number three. The high sage is a representation of the high priestess. So for some of you guys, it could be dealing with a situation where for some of you guys, you could have came out of a very toxic relationship. Around the time that you came out of a toxic relationship, you met or were dealing with someone um, that could have potentially been something platonic or physical. And there's like two major contrasts here because I feel that for some of you guys, they haven't physically had you and it's almost like they have this intense and passionate connection um, or desire to attain you or to have you. But there is also the platonic energy that I'm sensing where they see you kind of as something that is unattainable they see you as very, for some of you guys, you can be extremely spiritual. And it's almost like this side to you intimidates them, but also draws them in. It's definitely someone in your energy field. So I'm getting different scenarios. I'm getting three different storylines here. For some of you guys, it could have been a fuck buddy situation. For others of you, it could be a person that you definitely are aware of. It is a person that perhaps has certain to to uh, toxic traits. It could be a person that has a tendency of having only physical connections. And it's like they weren't able to attain you. But you definitely know of this connection because it's a very strong connection. So to me, it's almost like the contrast, right? The high priestess and the devil. It's like a secretive type of connection. Um and this person is definitely, like, definitely obsessing. I can even go as far as saying obsessing over you. Because they are craving, they are desiring, they are wanting you. For others of you, it could have been, like I said, the scenario of that, of coming out of a toxic relationship. And you connected with this person or with this individual where you felt like you guys were being very drawn to each other. It's almost like very palpable because I can feel the energy like electrifying type of energy. Um, but there is something toxic here. So it could be that they have a tendency of being toxic. It could be that they have a tendency of only like connecting with people on a physical level. They've never really given themselves the opportunity to connect. And it could be because they haven't healed from something from the past. Um, but I definitely see them like really obsessing over you. This is what I'm getting, you guys. It's so weird. I'm getting that they are obsessing over you. They're not just watching you. They're like legit watching your every stories. This is a person that's creating fake profiles. This is a person that is like doing whatever they have to do to look, to look into, to lick, <laughs> to look into what you're doing. And the devil card is exactly the energy of, to me, that rawness, that that raw sexual animalistic type of energy with the high sage, it's like you've triggered something within them and they just don't know how to explain it. But they like it, it scares them, but it also draws them in. Like that's what makes them, that's what really sparks their interest. I don't know how to describe it. It's very palpable, the energy I'm sensing right now. Okay, let me take a deep breath because it's really heavy energy, you guys. All right, the next card here that we have is the Justice card. So yeah, 
I feel like this person could have been extremely toxic in the past. I feel like this is a fuck boy or a fuck girl in the past where they've kind of created a lot of destruction where they've been or where they've, you know, walked everywhere they walk. It's like destruction, right? Um, they're very charming, very charming. But I feel like with the justice card and the high sage, you are karmically almost soul tied connected to them and that's the reason why you cannot explain this connection or you cannot explain the connection that you feel i feel that those of you guys that chose set number three you definitely know who this is and it's like you are i don't want to say you're their karma for everything they've done in the past but that's kind of the sense i'm getting but in reality, it's like on a deeper level. It's on a more spiritual level. I feel like you're here to awaken them. You're here to show them um, a deeper kind of love. Something they've ran away from for a very long time. And I feel like it's not coincidence that you guys have met or that you guys have came together. Or perhaps it's a hot and cold type of situation that you're dealing with. And the reason for that is because they're very drawn to you, but they're also scared of the connection. I hope that makes sense, you guys. All right, the next card that we have here is the Conqueror of Wands, which is the Knight of Wands. Yeah, I definitely sense like in the past, they were definitely not the type to settle or they were definitely not the type to take anyone seriously. But I feel like you've shaken them to the core there is something about you that just draws them in. They cannot explain this type of connection. They've never experienced it. And it could be the reason why they obsess over you. But the moment that they have you around or the moment that you guys are in the same vicinity of each other, it's like it's a scary type of energy because it is so strong, um, very drawn. Now, for those of you guys that chose this set and you're not aware of the person that uh, they're speaking about, be mindful that this is timeless and the energies are fluid. So if you're not currently experiencing this, you will be experiencing this in the next coming weeks. Um, from now all the way to January, there's definitely a very strong soul connection that's coming in where you're going to find yourself being extremely in a very intense and passionate world with romance is what I'm sensing. The only card missing here is the lover's card, to be honest with you. Now, the next card that we have here is the two of swords. So I feel like there is definitely, there's definitely fears. I feel that they are scared of this connection. If you know who they are, it could be the type of connection where you feel like they're very flighty. Like they come around you and they like love bomb you and then all of a sudden they either pull back or they disappear or you don't hear from them. Um, but the reason for this is it's not really that they're, pain, they're playing mind games. It has more to do with the fact that they're scared to bring their guard down um, because they've never experienced this type of connection. Um, so yeah, this is a very strong energy, you guys. Um, I feel that those of you guys that chose set number three, you could be either extremely spiritual or on the spiritual path uh, because the energies I'm sensing speaks to me about awakening the Kundalini in someone else. And that usually indicates to me like a soulmate type of connection, um, a very deep type of connection where one or the other has a tendency of being much more spiritual. When you come together, you awaken that spiritual side to them. So again, could be the reason why they're scared of you, um, especially if this is a person that is very connected to the mundane, not really spiritual at all. It could be that that's what really intrigues them about you, but it can also represent the fear in that. All right, so let's see, Spirit Guides, what is their next course of action? What can we expect? What is their next course of action? What actions are they going to be taking for those that chose set number three? What is their course of action? 
and we have the ten of wands so they're definitely in their uh, feelings they're feeling burdened they're feeling like they really don't know what to do at this present time and this is something that came out very strongly it's almost like I feel that they don't like to be manipulated or they don't like to be told what to do and that could be the reason why they've never really embraced uh, monogamy but I feel like they are Feeling your energy so strongly that they know they don't want to share you or they w don't want to lose you. Um, and this is what's really bur burdensome to them. This is what's really difficult or what they're having trouble with right now. Um, I feel like they are not taking quick action. Um, so you may not see major changes uh, quick anyways. However, we do have here the two of cups. So it's no matter how strong they resist this connection, no matter how bad they run away from this connection or they try to um, entertain themselves with other superficial connections, I feel like they are going to try everything they possibly can, right, with the Ten of Wands. It is about challenging themselves because they don't want to give in, but no matter how hard they try, the Two of Cups is here. So they will give in to their, their emotions. They will give in to their desires. They will give in to opening up or reaching out to you or expressing truly and genuinely what they feel for you. I feel that what they're saying here is just give it time. Be patient in this process. All right, my lovelies. I hope that this gives you insight. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, definitely comment below. Let me know. Um, I want to wish every single one of you guys happy holidays and we'll see each other soon. Bye.